Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian, who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! Today's video is on a topic that I have wanted to talk about for a long time. I want to talk about Zach Levine and why, crazy opinion, I don't think he's trash. Before we get into that, I think it's important that I put my biases out there. If you are familiar with this channel, which you should be, please subscribe, you would know that I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. I am also a huge fan of Zach Levine, even before he became a Chicago Bull. I mean, look at this shit, man. That's a 50 dunk, man. That is a 50 dunk, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you got it. How can you not be a fan of that? And it's not just the dunk contest that made me love Zach Levine. His game on the court in his third season with Minnesota was amazing. So I am very biased here. Zach Levine is my second favorite player in the league, and he's on my favorite team in the league. So if you want to take my opinion with a grain of salt, I completely understand that. But what I will say is that I'm not by default biased about players that are on my team. As a matter of fact, the last couple of players in the NBA that I have really disliked are Chicago Bulls players. I didn't like Cameron Payne, didn't like Jerry and Grant for wasting Laurie Markkinen's rookie year, don't like Felicio because of his awful contract, and I fucking hated Nikola Mirashit with every fiber of my being. And I also like to have a realistic viewpoint on how good a player can be so that I don't end up being disappointed. So with that explanation out of the way, I want to talk about Zach Levine and why the doubts around him are pretty damn ridiculous. And now, after trying to cast some doubts on my potential biases, here's an intro that is just a Zach Levine alley with some music over it. Rebound! Save! Absolutely incredible! So before we get into some of the criticisms around Zach Levine's game, I first want to talk about his 2018-19 season. Needless to say, Zach had a career year. He averaged 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 4.5 and assists, shooting 47% from the field and 37% from 3. Zach Levine is 23 years old. He just came off of a season where he was only able to play 24 games due to an ACL tear, and he was playing with a team that was constantly injured, that was filled with G League players, and a team that went through through some big mid-season trades and coaching changes. Zach Levine, despite all the inconsistencies of the Chicago Bulls season, still managed to average an efficient 24 points per game. Keyword there being efficient. The reason that is a key word is something that I will talk about in a second. First, I want to talk about where Zach Levine ranks as a scorer versus the rest of the league. He was 16th in the NBA in points per game, and he did it shooting better than 7 of the 16 players. Because of the month of February that Zach had, where he averaged 27 points per game on 53, 49, 81 shooting splits, his field goal percentage and 3 point percentage boosted a lot. So just keep in mind that Zach was fairly efficient this year. So with that being said, said, like five times, I want to talk about the key criticisms around Zach Levine's game. The biggest problem that people have with Zach Levine's game is his defense, his passing, his shot selection, and the idea that he is an empty stats guy and that he can't lead a team to wins. Those last two kind of go together, I'm going to tackle these one at a time. Starting with his defense. Yes, he is a bad defensive player, there's no denying that. While he has definitely improved this season, and he has improved if you've actually watched his games, he isn't even an average defender and I can't imagine he will ever be even an average defender. However, I think that Levine's offensive impact will be so good that his defense will won't matter. There are some dudes in the NBA that are just good enough on offense that it doesn't matter how bad they are on defense. James Harden is the most extreme example, though he's not as bad of a defender as he used to be because the internet pretty much cyber bullied him into trying every once in a while. And there are guys like Damian Lillard, his backcourt mate CJ McCollum, Kemba Walker, D'Angelo Russell, Trey Young, and others. So while yes, Zach Levine is a poor defender, he is not so bad 
that it makes him a negative impact player. So next we need to talk about Zach Levine's playmaking, which is an issue with his game that for the longest time I have felt was overblown. Here's the deal. Is 4.5 assists per game very impressive? No, it's not, but it's also not bad. If you watched a handful of Bulls games this season, you would know that there was a lot of times where Zach would have the ball and the Bulls offense would seem stagnant. However, you have to consider the fact that Zach only played like 20 something games with Chris Dunn this year. So Levine had to handle the ball a lot more than he should have. And with that, he played his game a scorer's game when he was in the situation where he needed to be more of a playmaker because he was the only good ball handler on the team because there was no one else on this roster that could create shots for others so that gave the appearance that zach levine was a ball hog when in reality he was just forced into a role that he wasn't built to play i don't see people criticizing players like cj mccollum for averaging three assists per game hell even a player like donovan mitchell who has a higher usage percentage than zach levine averaged three assists per game this year but luckily for cj and mitchell they had a point guard next to them averaging six to seven assists per game zach didn't have that for more than 20 something games because if you didn't know chris dunn was averaging six assists per game this year so because of that his issues as a playmaker seemed way worse than they actually were 6.5 assists per game is not that bad for a player like him but there would be possessions here or there where he'd miss an open player and he would get overly scrutinized for it. Now, his issues with shot selection, I somewhat agreed with, but he's improved a lot throughout the season with it. Zach, for most of the season, had the DeMar DeRozan problem, which is a term that I coined for myself only. The problem that I've had with DeRozan a lot in the past is there would be many possessions where he would pull up for a mid-range shot when he had the opportunity to get to the rim. Zach had that problem as well for a majority of the season, but for the last 20 to 30 games, I can tell you from watching those games, Levine started taking less and less mid-range shots. And when he had any kind of lane to the rim, he took it without hesitation. And as for some of the bad shots that he often takes, I mean, he's the primary perimeter scorer on a really bad team. He's gonna be forced to take some bad shots sometimes. That's just how it goes. And finally, we have the empty stats and he just can't win criticisms. Here's the thing, with the empty stats idea, you can never 100% tell. So it's unfair to me to say that a guy who's always played on bad teams is an empty stats guy. Only after a player has a decent team and he seemingly holds them back can you give them that criticism. And don't you for even a second tell me that Zach Levine was the reason that his teams were not winning teams. He has played with nothing but young talent. In Minnesota, it was Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins, and in Chicago, it was Laurie Markkinen and Wendell Carter Jr. He's playing on teams that had unclear futures and unstable environments. Zach has never been put in any kind of position to even be a 10th seed. Unlike a certain player who I don't want to throw under the bus, but I kind of have to, Devin Booker. Now, I don't really think anyone expected Booker to lead the Suns to the NBA playoffs, but they had no business being a bottom three team in the league. TJ Warren, DeAndre Ayton, Kelly Oubre, and Trevor Ariza, depending on the time of the season. Mikhail Bridges, Rashawn Holmes off of the bench who is supremely underrated. The Suns could have been the 10th seed at the very least with that level of talent, but Booker put up empty numbers. Now, Booker also gets criticized for this, so it's not the greatest example. So let's look at another guy that gets great numbers, consistently loses, and never gets criticized for it. While also being a player that everyone considers slept on, Kemba Walker. Now, it's not as bad with him versus Levine. The Hornets just missed the playoffs by like two games this year, but I also think Levine isn't on the same level as Kemba. But Kemba is a guy that puts up big numbers with no real help and ultimately doesn't make the playoffs. Now, does that make Kemba Walker a bad player? Hell no, not even close. That's actually the opposite of my point. My point is a good player like Kemba Walker can still miss the playoffs despite his talent because of the lack of help on his roster. That's just the nature of the sport. This isn't fucking tennis, it's a team game and your teammates matter. And if you have a lot of young players or G League talents mixed with a bunch of inconsistencies in the regular season, you are not going to win unless you are the elite of the elite. And if anything, 
anything, putting up good numbers on keyword good efficiency is impressive on a bad team. Because if you're a guy like that, you're the only player that the opposing team is paying any kind of attention to. Empty numbers would be high production with really poor efficiency. But Zach Levine is efficient. Zach Levine is a talent comparable to the Devin Bookers, Donovan Mitchells, and CJ McCollums of the world. And all I ask is that people start giving him the same level of respect as those guys. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.